Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Welcome. <clears throat> Welcome, everyone. Hi. Hi. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you. Um, a lot has happened <clears throat> since last week's show. Hi, everybody. A lot has happened. I was just hearing in my head, as the world turns, um, and I, I couldn't even remember what, what the show was last week, and then I remembered, oh, okay, Emily and I fully accepted the uh, assignment, and she moved in um, the room next to me. We put a mattress on the floor, and it was literally all for me. Um, it saved my life, actually, because I, after the show, I went through probably the biggest intensity I've been through yet in these months with what I was healing in my mind and I literally came to this place of, of hopelessness and um, Emily was just there saying just allow it just allow it and at this point since we had said the full yes um, there was a trust in my mind that that I just dropped into what she was saying so deeply and just allowed myself to face this this core pain and terror, terror actually that I had been in that was like nagging on the surface for all these months and years. And um, it was very profound because I didn't even realize what was happening. But when I reached a point of hopelessness, that was when spirit came in. And um, for two, and, and I think that only lasted, Emily says it lasted a day and a half. Um, I didn't leave my room. And then for three more days, I don't think I left my room much. I was having this, it felt like the glimpse I had 25 years before, but um, yeah, I was just, this truth was soar, soaring through my mind day and night and day and night. And I kept running into Emily's room and she's in the room next to me. And I was just like, you're not going to believe this. And you're not going to believe this. And oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And, and there were times when I was just like, I feel like I'm on drugs. I don't know what's happening. It was, but it was all good. And it was, yeah, I just kept sharing it with her, and, and she just said, just allow it, just allow it. And so mm -hmm. what happened next was I felt like time collapsed, and the next morning, David called Emily and I over to the temple for a meeting. And, um, yeah, I think I'll let Emily share that part. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, it's so beautiful because like like we were talking about on the on the last show like just fully accepting this assignment in mind like we are given to each other as mighty companions to be so joined in everything and seeing where there were maybe parts of the parts of ourselves or parts of the mind that we wanted to keep to ourselves and in that we're actually saying no to the spirit like saying that part of my mind I want to keep autonomous and I'm not inviting you into it. So just by fully taking on those that are given in the moment. Or I, I need to say this because it doesn't matter if it's a person given you or a project. Um, what I discovered through this last week was you don't know the way out of your terror. You have no idea. And the minute you surrender to that and just invite the spirit in so vigilantly that in every five minutes he'll tell you exactly what you need to do to get out of that terror. But when I accepted, there was only two things in front of me to accept and it was the school and Emily. And the only, what we were like not accepting the, this part fully. So we weren't, when in fact we were gonna be able to help each other pop through these things and when we did, yeah. So I wanted to share with you guys whatever is in front of you is your way out and until you say yes 100 percent then you can't move past it this was the proof i had i don't really know how to put it in words emily's mm. much better at this right now than mm. me but mm. can you can you expand on that well i think it's like just with i think this is what we were talking about last week as well like fully saying yes to whatever is given is the speed up and when we do that it's like time collapses because like ricky was saying she had a very short period of a lot of intensity coming up and it was with that yes you were saying I'm ready I'm ready to to look in a deeper way at my mind until we're we're able to say that it's like it 
the spirit is not going to force it onto us. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, you had those few days of just once that was faced, it was like something was lifted from the mind for all of these insights to flood in. And what was perfect about us now having like rooms beside each other was I really, in that, and actually in those days, I really needed to hear it. And the only way that Ricky could keep it, this, keep it in her mind was to keep speaking it, to be like sharing it. So, yeah, because I tried to write it down and because it was so profound every time and I kept trying to write everything down and Spirit was like, you can write it, go ahead and write it, but it's, you won't, you, when I would read the words later, I couldn't bring it back. He was like, no, it's, I'm giving you an experience of me in every moment and you won't be able to hold on to it. And I was so pissed. I was like, God, I want to hold on to this. It's, uh, it's amazing. Mm. And then in that, like Ricky was saying, David called us over to the temple to have a meeting with him in Svava. And it was kind of amazing. Like, this is just a few days after the last show. The whole world shifted in a morning. Like, literally, anything that we thought was even happening in our lives, <laughs> like, completely shifted. And there were all of these um, things coming in around Europe. Uh, like, I, I don't even know where to start. Like, there's so much. And That's why you're starting, because I have <laughs> no idea where to start right now. Because I think you, most of you probably already know that... Um, uh, Lisa and Frank are in Europe at the moment looking for a property. I think um, um, when David was over there with them, they were on Jason's show, and at that point they were in Portugal. But they're in Mallorca now, and it really feels like the spirit is wanting some kind of base in Europe. Like there's a deep call there, and it's just taking it step by step. So it feels like, yeah, I'm probably going to go to Europe, um, maybe around March, and be part of that whole new chapter, which for me, when David said that, it just like felt so expansive in my mind. Like, we fully take on the assignment, and, and once day. you say yes, it's like, okay, you're going to Europe. <laughs> it's not immediately, but it's like time collapses. Like, once the, once, yeah, the lesson is, is learned, or the the full yes is there. It's like, okay, the spirit's like, okay, this is where your next expansion is, and this is where your next expansion is. So, yeah, at the moment, Lisa and Frank are there. They're in Mallorca. They're looking at a few properties, and it could possibly there be there. But if it's not in Mallorca, it might be in the Mediterranean somewhere, even Italy. The south of Italy has, has been um, suggested too. So I just see, you know, even on our online shows, there's so many of you from Europe tuning in, like there's just like this deep call and this deep mm. desire to like fully take on and live the teachings of A Course in Miracles. So I feel like the spirit is just meeting that and it's for everyone. It's for everyone who's, who's put out the prayer of their heart mm. in Europe that wants to go deeper and it's for all of us that are being called. It's like it's no different. Everybody is expanding in this. And then as part of that, what was really exciting was David was saying, we're, we're probably going to have a really, really big retreat in Holland in early June. One of the biggest retreats we've ever had, maybe 200 plus people. And in that, there could be up to eight teachers from Living Miracles going to Europe. Um, also, I think Netta Boyne is probably going to be part of it. And maybe Marion Doro as well, who's in Holland. Um, there's going to be a big music component. I think we're going to have voice liberation sessions. So really, like, people can have an experience of that deep surrender to the spirit and using the voice for that. It's going to be movie sessions, teaching sessions, experiential. It just feels huge. Mm. So with that, Ricky got her next step um, that she's, well, actually, you have another step beforehand, which I'll let you share about. But after that, you're going to be going to Holland and... Mm -hmm. Coordinate, coordinating the whole orchestration of this massive <laughs> retreat that's going to be like huge for Europe and it's kind of like our launch in Europe it's like we've, we've landed we've arrived we don't know what the spirit's plan is after that but that's going to be the beginning of it so yeah yeah well David was saying that he felt it might be in some time in June and um, so I was trying to yeah orchestrate when I would uh, leave the school and um, leave Mexico, and I had just been, um, let's see, how do I explain this? Uh, I had watched this show come Sunday, and I wrote a song right after. I don't know if you guys have seen that show, but I wrote it, a song came out of it, and then I had a deep call um, just to, to minister to people who kind of had the same background as me, a lot of pain, a lot of feeling left out, and a part of that was 
kind of coming out as gay, which I did on the sh first show that I did. But I just, I didn't know what it meant, but I kept hearing gay ministry But I, after I watched that show, but I just didn't know how it worked because I'd just come into something so much bigger than just a label, and I had given up concepts and all kinds of things, but David and Jason kept mentioning Ricky's gay ministry, and I was like, I don't know what they're saying. I don't even know how it's going to look, you know, but they, you know, we just support when something comes from the Spirit, and we don't know what it's going to look like, but um, yeah, so I just asked David, you know, I, I, somebody wrote me from Canada saying, that, do I know any gay people with A Course in Miracles? She was hearing a gay ministry, and I was like, what? This is so bizarre. And then I had a student at the school come who just is trying to heal all the past pain of his life um, and all the friends he lost to AIDS and just really has a lot of pain and suffering. So I had a call with the three of them and we explored some things, but nothing really, I couldn't feel anything. Like I, I didn't know how to go out and find gay people. It wasn't making sense to me. So when David called us in, I just said, what's, what's with this? Like I, I, there's, there's a possibility that I could have an invite just to go to do a week retreat in Canada. There's a possibility with someone inviting me in Virginia, someone at possibility in Oregon, but I don't know. Um, there were just some invites that I mentioned. S should I just put that on the side for now since I'm going to Holland? He goes, well, you know, maybe you just leave Mexico on February 1st and do your, your tour of February, March, maybe even April, and then go to Holland. <clears throat> and we were trying to discuss the time I would go to Holland because I could only be in the country three months. So while we were having this discussion, my friend Micah texted me or messaged me and um, I hadn't heard from her in a couple of months because we were each going through our own healing. So let's see, how can I get, you're going to have to help me piece it because David says, go on your U.S. tour, right? Yeah. And I said, wow, Micah just from Holland just texted me. And the other thing was when we were with David, not only did Micah text, I think Trisha yeah. Ryan, who's also in Holland, uh -huh. texted uh, Netta Boyne, who is probably going to be part of this retreat, and then Marianne Doro, who's in Holland. I hadn't heard from her in months. She emails me three times that morning. So all of the people that we're going to be collaborating with or in that area, we're, we're just getting all these messages. Like when it's the Spirit's plan, it's made very obvious. <laughs> right. So... Um... So I was telling Micah all of this that David said, and she said, oh, I'm, I want to come on that U.S. tour with you. And I was like, ah, oh, when do I bring Micah on? Is it now? Sure. <laughs> Why don't we bring Micah on? <laughs> Let's see how we do that so I can see her. Mm. There she is. Hey. Mm. Can you hear us? Can I hear you? Can I hear her? Maybe. I can't hear you yet. Oh, oh there you are. Hi. Maybe, maybe you share about when you first met Micah. Okay, yeah. Let me just take you back a minute because I was first introduced to Micah on Calico's show, Beyond the Body, um, where her and Lila came on the show. I don't know if you guys saw that episode, but I did. And when I saw Micah on the show, my heart just burst wide open. And I, I didn't understand it. You know, I had been in a, an assignment for years and I hadn't had that kind of heart opening and I didn't understand it so I kept it my set to myself and then when I finally revealed it about six weeks later because Micah was contacting us saying she was going to come to Strawberry and I was over Strawberry I kind of just yeah I just shared it and everybody was like oh we all were attracted to her yeah she's a spark yeah have her come and so but I was really nervous because I could really feel something and I knew at that time that um, the assignment I was had been in for five years was coming to an end at the end of Strawberry and I knew it was coming to an end and it was an agreement and it was just kind of a, a slow letting go that that had been coming for a while it was like I had to be ready and um, so during that time um, yeah just uh, where, I'm, I'm lost again. Help me. Pull me back. I'm very, very nervous right now. <laughs> mm. Well, I think, yeah, you were just sharing that when you first kind of saw Micah on the show, that something just like burst in your heart, but it was only, it was only that day or something, and it wasn't really in your awareness afterwards. And it feels like with all of these um, plans for things coming in Europe and the Holland retreat, and then when we're with David, 
you heard from Micah again and you had a call with her and you, you felt that same feeling mm. again that, mm -hmm. that because you had been going through um, a lot of healing in between that time and your Jesus had your mind very, very focused on like the healing, what, the healing and, and I, what you were letting go of. But yeah. something, it was like you, you had felt that spark with Micah and then it kind of came in on that call when you were telling her about all of these plans and then didn't she share she would love to travel as well mm -hmm. on the U.S. tour? Yeah, I mean, there was more to it in between because, yeah, I, um, when, when, it was time, when Strawberry ended, I, you know, Micah and I joined with a couple of people, a couple of people that I really trust. And we were just seeing if she was to stay and that we, if we had a relationship assignment. But it was felt that Micah go back and finish her last semester in, in college and that literally I the timing was not right for me because I had to look at this deep terror of like not knowing who I was without my past anymore. But Mike and I did try to kind of rush things a bit. We, we, we communicated and felt a lot of love, but it just wasn't the timing and we both were getting frustrated. She kept asking me to marry her and I was getting so frustrated because she hadn't even taken a step. And I was like, stop asking me that because I think a part of me had heard it and I just didn't yeah, I just didn't understand. Like, it was too much without her doing... So, yeah, a lot of healing with that. And in the end, I saw that I had to just let go of everything and really go through this deep healing. So when I had that one call with Mike and we were trying to arrange, like, when I would come to Holland and that she would come to the U.S. and go on this three-month tour with me and it felt really sparkly, we were trying to arrange when I could go and be out of the country because I only had three months, and she said, um, you won't be needing to leave the country because you'll be marrying me. And so I just took all this information to David, and so bottom line is we're here to just announce that we are getting married, <laughs> and we are going... <laughs> I'm like sweating trying to say this. I, I don't even know what's happening. It feels like so much... There's just... Yeah, I don't know. Help, y'all. It's so beautiful, though, because like this morning... Ricky was like a little shaky and I, I walked into the room and she was like, okay, I, I'm a little shaky, I don't know how I'm going to do the show. And I, I think it's just like, because you've been sharing with me over the past few days that you actually, there's been like a real deep healing happening for you because you're actually getting everything you always wanted. And we're not really talking about form and yet the form ref can reflect that as well. And, and actually a deep fear was coming up for you underneath. It was like, is, is this really happening? Like, can I, um, do I deserve to be happy actually was underneath it. And it was this fear of, of being happy. And, and I think like that is underneath, I think for everybody, you know, and it's not necessarily conscious, but you really got in touch with it with this. And it was like facing exactly what the spirit was giving you to face and letting go of the past. And you kept hearing, you have to let go of the past to let in the new, you have to let it go. And that was your prayer out front. And it was, you were like so determined and so devoted so to that. Determined. And that last shred that you faced in your mind, which was so intense, you popped through and just started having all of these insights. And within a few days, the whole world shifted. And it was like a whole new chapter was opening up. And the what's you know, underneath it is the guidance. Like it could seem, because we were even praying, okay, how do we share this on the show? Because it, yeah. it seems very radical. Like in a worldly sense, you know, announcing a marriage when you haven't even announced a relationship, you know, it seems like things are moving really, really quickly. And in the world, it is that way because everything is very linear. Like the ego sets it up, okay? We'll, we'll have dates, <laughs> we'll get to know each yeah, other. Yeah, I'm kind She's, of freaking out because like, I'm like getting married and I've never even kissed her. <laughs> and I don't know, like, what? <laughs> I'm like, are we going to just go right on tour or how is this going to work? All those little legalities started coming up. I'm like, what is happening? But literally at two months ago when I stopped, before I, Micah and I stopped communicating at all, I, I told Jason, I, I was just, I was just, I was like, I heard I'm going to marry her. And I, I didn't even know what to do with this and nobody answered me. So I just dropped it. You know, the timing was wrong, but it scared the shit out of me anyway. So it wasn't time, but, but it was just being able to hear all these things and 
actually not being attached to the outcome and being willing to let it all go. And I was practicing because I really wanted spirit to show me because it seemed so out of the box because I've, I mean, I'm going to be 50 next year. And, you know, when I wanted to get married, it wasn't legal. And then when it became legal, I was like a, a nun in a living miracles monastery. I didn't even, you know, and I had to really start to see that it was okay for me to be who I am, not gay, per se, because I went through that when I was a, but was it okay in this new life? And more than that, was it, was I okay just to be who I am? And like I told y'all on that first show, I didn't know who I was anymore. And now I just, I think I've always known, I just was afraid it wasn't going to be good enough to be loved. And, and then when I see that I'm getting everything I've ever wanted, I'm just so afraid it's like, Someone's going to say, ha ha, we were joking. Like spirit was saying, no, you didn't, you didn't hear me right. Or something. I don't know. There's just this. Yeah. So I've been facing that. And I, I was telling Emily, can I just get excited? And she's like, you're in it for healing. You know, you, and I said, you're right. I did hear there was going to be even a deeper level. It's, I heard your work's not done. That's what I heard. Yeah. That's like the, not the purpose of everything that we do is for healing and you know, it might seem that you even had that in mind, oh, I, you know, you wanted to get married, but it's only coming in because it's going to bring you closer to God. It's actually bringing in like a deepening for both you and Micah and for the whole world, actually. It, you know, the, every step we take guided by Jesus is for the whole world. And really, that's all we care about. So although it seems radical in form, we practice every day just following the guidance. And if it comes in that this is Jesus' plan, there is a full trust in that and there's a full embrace. Nothing is casual just because it seems like things move quickly. It is, there's so much prayer behind it and there's so much integrity, but we trust Jesus. But I don't even know how I could doubt it because the truth that was soaring in my mind like a light beam for two and a half days, how could anything but the truth come out of that? And so, and for Micah, she, she didn't know if she, there was kind of some fear, Micah can tell herself, tell us herself, but there was a bit of not knowing if, how community would work for her. And she really felt to tour with me and she saw it in advance. Maybe you can tell him, Micah, how, how it's all worked yeah, out for like you. That. Yeah, Talk it's like, that. no, so, so there was a, um, for me, it was really hard to let you go as well because I, because I, well, I really had thought that something would, would happen between us. And then, and then it looked like it was not going to happen. So I had to surrender that. And then, and then, and it felt so bad, but I just had to trust that if it was going to happen, it, it would happen at some point. And then, and then I also felt that in a way it had already happened. And I've never had that experience, but I, it was like I was remembering the future. <laughs> <laughs> it was like I, I saw us being on tour I saw us being together and I thought maybe it's like a past life or something I have no idea but it was such a strong thing and, and then also I thought um, I'm just completely fooling myself obviously <laughs> um, yeah but it's like I, I knew it hmm. you wanted to share a little bit about the tour as well <clears throat> yes so I think um, David had just suggested that we use this show, Micah and I use this show to just put it out there that we're going to be on a U.S. tour. And um, it looks like we're going to get in the car and just accept, yeah, maybe there'll be a thing in Canada as well, but get in the car and just, um, I have in mind, because I've just been through this like amazing healing in my mind, like my whole world just, just completely I feel like time collapsed and everything was given in this moment that I did the work and something happened with, to me that I know that I never need to figure anything out again. That it, and I learned it through, yeah, years of learning how to meditate and get still in the mind. But just recently through journaling and when I put the pen down, I'm no longer writing spirits, just giving me the answers like I had a pen in my mind all the time. Expression, I've learned how to open up and go past the fear of being inadequate, being, um, feeling I wasn't valued, feeling I wasn't um, appropriate, feeling that I wasn't appropriate as a person. I just, I've had to 
the fear of uh, punishment for, for being happy, all of these things, um, and time collapsing. I just have so much to share. I told Sarah in, um, in Canada that she has a huge group that she had invited me to. Like, I could do a week retreat right now and just show people how to live your life, to actually live it with spirit. And in that, you get everything you've ever dreamed of. It's just so bizarre. But... So I feel just, it's so beautiful and wonderful, but you have to go, you have to do the work. And I just want to share that it's everything. So we just want to put the invitation out if anybody has a spark for us to come and do a gathering or a couple of gatherings. Um, there'll be, for me, I like to just show, um, you know, how I would love to show how I journal, how I wake up every morning, expression session, um, music sessions, healing touch sessions, um, trust walks. There's just so much. And um, I've just toured a lot with David and um, Kirsten and myself and Eric. I've just done a lot of gatherings. And um, now it's just a beautiful new spark to have Micah come along and support and to share her beautiful spark with everyone. And we don't know what, exactly what it's going to look like, but I do feel Spirit has something for me to share and to give. And um, so just you can just email me at Ricky at livingmiracles.org or um, Facebook Messenger Me is another way to contact me or anyone you know through Living Miracles if you want my phone number just ask them um, I'm coming out in February, March and April and your invitations will show the way where we start, where we end, how long it'll be and then we'll do some touring in Holland as well so if you um, are interested in that and yeah who knows could be a a lifetime tour of the mind. So I'm really excited. <laughs> Do you want to share the states that you already had in mind? The states we already have in mind are Canada, Oregon, Florida. I have New Orleans in mind for some reason. Um, Virginia. Utah. Utah. And then I've just done a lot of touring in the past. I have contacts. I'm not going to contact them yet, but I have North Carolina that I tour a lot. Um, Florida, um, I can't even think of all the places right now. Let's not even bring the past in. Let's just see what comes in and see what happens. Yeah. It's all new. It's all new. So We could put your email address in the chat box Can maybe. Put just... that, Ricky at livingmiracles.org um, or Facebook Messenger or contact anyone here. So. so yeah, it's just pretty, I think it's it's pretty amazing to see like when we follow the Spirit's plan it's like we have no idea what's, what's coming. It's like it, it's beyond what we could even imagine. And yet we think we know what will make us happy. And we really don't. So it's like, yeah, I just I feel like I can't say it enough. Like tuning into like, what is the guidance? What would you have me do now? And in that, he convinces us that there is no sacrifice, that it, we deserve to be happy. And it can't just be an intellectual thing. It has to be experiential. And the only way we're going to experience that is, you know, follow the guidance. Well, every minute you connect with spirit um, opens up that door for you to have an entire life of joy with no interruption. Because for those two and a half days, that's what I had. And I've been shown that there's, you know, every time you do it and just join with spirit and get that peace, You've just enlarged it. And every other time you do it, and it's, it's just going to be one experience. I, I have no words. I, by the time I get on tour, I'll have it for you, but it's still so fresh. But I've just seen that there's only peace, there's only love, and you can access it. And I'd love to tell you how I got there. It's freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. um, it's for all of us, and it's inevitable, and I'm just so grateful for you guys because being on the show is like watching my awakening on freaking live TV. It's just, mm -hmm. wow. So... <laughs> I'd love to see you guys, so let me know if you, you'd like to have a visit. They're telling me my time's up. Thank you, Micah. Very excited to see you and have a date with you before we get married. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Let me see what...